What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my top CSS tricks to use inside of Webflow. So last week I shared these on Instagram and received a lot of requests for a tutorial on these tricks. So that's what we're going to cover today. For this trick, we want our line element to inherit from its parent font color. So right now, the body background color and text color is being changed with this interaction. We want the background color of this div right here to also reflect that. So we'll copy the class of the div, go to an embed that's on our page, and inside the open and closing style tags, we'll get the class of the div. And then basically what we want to do with that is set its background color right here to current color, just like this. And what that's going to do is when we change the uh, font color of the parent, then the background color of that div will change as well. So if we preview our Webflow interaction now, what we'll notice is that the color, the background color of that div is changing with the font color of the entire body. Um, we can still override this at any point with a combo class. For this trick, we want many of our UI elements to share the same border radius. We could create a global class and add that onto each element that we want the radius applied to, but on tablet and below, if we want to make changes to the base element, it's going to try to jump us back to the desktop view, which can be very frustrating. We'll end up having to remove that class, make the change, and add it back on. So a simpler way to do this is really just to target all elements uh, with a class name that contain a particular word. So we can use that keyword as the thing that we're going to style. So we'll open up an embed on the page with open and closing style tags. We'll basically open up a straight bracket and then the word class and then the asterisk equals uh, open quote and then we'll type the word that we want to look for. In this case, it's the word radius. We'll close the quote and we'll do a closing straight bracket. Then inside there, we can just open up our CSS and here I'll set a border radius and I'll set it equal to 0.8 EM. Um, so what you'll notice now is that every element that has that word radius in the class name has this border radius applied. So if I wanted to apply that to the button, all I had to do is put that radius anywhere. could be anywhere in that class name, and it automatically has that same radius applied. I can still make any changes I want to it on mobile without affecting the other elements. For this trick, we want our links to inherit from their parent font color. By default on the all links tag in Webflow, if we don't apply a font color, our links will be blue. If we apply a dark font color, they'll be hard to see in dark sections. With a light font color, they'll be hard to see in light sections, unless we add combo classes. But there is an easier workaround. So with an embed on the page, inside our open and closing style tags, we'll just type an A, which represents all our links. We'll open up the brackets, and inside there, we'll set their color to inherit and we'll, then we'll go ahead and save. What that's going to do is each of these links will inherit from their parent font color. So for instance, if I grab the div that's applying the font color here and adjust it, you'll notice that even the links inside is changing in font color. However, I still have the option to add a combo class to this. And then when I do that, I can change the font color. So these font colors can be overridden. Uh, with combo classes, but if no color is applied on these links, they'll inherit from their parent font color. In this example, we want to affect all of the siblings after our active class. So we're using a Webflow slider. This is Webflow pagination up here. It gives all of the pagination dots a class of w-slider-dot, and it gives the current one a combo class of w-active. So if we want to gray out all of the siblings after whatever the active dot is, We'll drag an embed onto the page and put open and closing style tags inside that embed. Then we'll just target the class of w-slider-dot, and this will get all of them. Then we only want to look for the active one, so with no space in between, we'll add a period, and then the combo class of w-active. So we're getting only the active slider dot. After that, we'll add a space, and then the tittle, which is just the squiggly line here, another space, and then we'll target the class of w-slider dash dot again. So what this is saying is it's grabbing the active dot, then it's only grabbing the sibling slider dots that are immediately following this active class here. So then we can do anything we want with those siblings. So in this case, I'm just going to grab the opacity and set it to 0.3. And then when I save and preview, what we'll notice is that the all the siblings following that active class are immediately grayed out. We can use the same concept in this example. So we have a bunch of sticky links that link to a particular section on the page. 
Webflow gives any link that's currently in view a combo class of w dash dash current. So we can use that combo class to say any link following that class that's a sibling. We can gray it out. All we have to do is open up an embed on the page with style tags inside. And then we can target the class of our link, which in this case is tricks link. And then we'll get the one with the combo class of w dash dash current. And then we'll add the symbol. And then we'll grab all other links immediately following that link. And then we'll just turn their opacity down by using in this case, opacity uh, 0 0.2. Um, and then once we save that, what we'll notice while we're scrolling through this is that any link following the current link is grayed out, and this is working pretty dynamically. In this example, we only want to see the nav line when it's inside of the current page's nav link. So these nav line images are inside each one of our nav links. All we're going to do is we're going to set that nav line image to display none by default, so that way we don't see it. Then we'll get the class of our nav link and then we'll head over to an embed on our page inside open and closing style tags we'll paste in the class of our nav link and then we want to find basically only the current pages nav link so we'll add a combo class so no space here because we're targeting a combo class of w dash dash current which is a class webflow adds to the current pages nav link and then once we have that current nav link we want to find an element inside of it, so we'll do a period, and this time we're uh, looking for nav line is the class of our element, and then we'll open up our brackets, and then what we want to do with that nav line is just set it to display block, so that way we can see it. So we got the current pages nav link, we're finding the nav line that's inside that current link, and then we're setting it to display block. So now if we uh, save, we'll actually see that this link has the underline under it. And if we click over to another page that also has our embed inside of it, we'll see that that nav line is under the current page's nav link. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that subscribe button below so you never miss out on another video. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.